Okay. Uh, oh, wait, are you pushing the button? Yep. to kind of get rid of, to block the world out, to get rid of uh, school stress, sports stress, family stress, uh, any other stress I can think of. Um, but when I go fishing, it's just me in the water. Um, I don't really think about anything else, but I kind of put myself in my own little world. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So like I said before, I'm doing, I'm doing my senior center project and I'm fishing and I chose to do kind of like a teaching aspect. We each have to do like a teaching part, a community part, or some other part that I'm forgetting. But I trust you mind on teaching the best 11 and 12 uh, students how to fish properly and safely. Um, I also show the students how a rod and reel works, um, because you're going to need to know that if you want to be successful at fishing. Uh, and not a lot of them knew how that worked and what it was. Um, I also created a PowerPoint called Fishing for Dummies, which we'll talk about later, um, that gave instructions on how to fish what the foundation of fishing is. Um, and in addition to that, I also wanted to explore um, the fishing population in Cherry Pond and other lakes around New Hampshire and why um, the fishing population is really low. Um, in Cherry Pond's case, the, fish, the fishing there is wicked low. There's not a lot of fish in there. Um, and I was curious to know if other lakes in New Hampshire also had that problem. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so how did I come up with this idea? Um, I didn't really come up with this, this with the fishing idea first. Um, at first, you don't succeed, like my slides right there. Um, I had two other ideas that I tried to make into a project, but each of them had their own uh, problems. Uh, my first idea was the Broke Valley Wrestling Program. Um, I don't know if all you guys know, but I wrestled here at the high school. Um, I've done it for four years. Uh, I love it. So I wanted to, I wanted to kind of make a pa another passion of mine, which is wrestling, into a senior project. Um, the Brooke Wallace program is a youth program for uh, kids in like 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Um, that, the youth program is to get them to have a little bit of taste of what wrestling is so they can make that big jump in high school. Because middle school wrestling and high school wrestling is a big jump uh, that those kids need to know. Um, so I was going to do my project on that, but that has its own issues. Um, I didn't, the timing wasn't really good. Um, I just, it had its own personal issues. Um, so the other project that my mother and I were thinking about going on was Building small houses for returning veterans. Um, a lot of returning veterans don't really didn't have a lot of housing, um, so me and my mentor uh, kind of thought about going along that road, uh, building houses for returning veterans. But I really didn't like that idea. Um, my heart, my heart wasn't in it. My mind wasn't in it. Was not in it. Um, I never really had a lot of uh, experience with working with tools and wood, um, so I didn't really think that that idea was going to go smoothly. So. Um, I kind of wanted to steer away from that, and I had to figure out. Um, so with those two other failed ideas, I had to really think about what, what, what am I passionate about? What do I really like to do in my free time? And the only ideas that I could come up with is eat, sleep, play PS4, and fishing. Um, those, are, those are the things I do in my free time. Uh, and I really, I really am passionate about fishing, and that's how this senior uh, project came to be. Um, but I wanted to, just saying I want to do my senior project for fishing is very, um, I really wanted my project to, to, to have fishing in it, but I want to do something with that. I want to do something with that idea. Um, I wanted to share my passion with other people. Uh, I realized that I have, I've been fishing for over a year, um, a few years ago, so I do have a lot of experience and knowledge under my belt. Um, and I realized that I have a lot more experience and knowledge than an average high school student. Because um, a lot of high school, the freshman and sophomore school students don't know how to fish. They really don't know where it is. Um, so I thought maybe I could maybe share that with them. Um, okay, so proposing my idea for my project. Um, having an idea is great, but without a foundation and without a road to go on, it's really just an idea, and that's what my idea was. I had an idea, I just didn't have a foundation 
and I didn't have really a good direction going. So what my idea was, I had to propose this to the best teachers at this high school um, because they were going to be a huge factor of whether or not I could actually do this. Um, so what I proposed to them was, I was going to teach the students how to fish correctly and safely. I was going to teach them fishing skills, just the foundations of fishing, nothing too strenuous. Um, and I was going to be exposed to something new. Um, I've never taught anyone how to do anything except uh, my little brothers to uh, how to turn on the TV and how to play the PS4. But other than that, I really haven't taught anyone anything, anything new. Um, so this was definitely going to push me out of my comfort zone. Um, and like I said before, I was going to do some researching on unstable fishing because that was a, another big uh, question on, on my list. Um, okay. So once I kind of proposed this idea to the best teachers, um, I had to really wait for their answer, and that was kind of more difficult than it sound, turns out to be. Um, they really weren't responding to my emails, so that was kind of delaying my process. So I had to go find each one of them, um, ask them face to face. They were all in a booth down in uh, Chris's office, so that was convenient. Uh, that was probably the best way to do it, rather than emailing them. Um, so I, I asked them all, all at once, and they said yes. Um, and so I, then I proposed my idea to my senior seminar teacher, Ms. Barnett. She was more than thrilled about the idea. So I finally, had, I finally had an idea I could go on. I had a foundation, I had a direction I was going to head in. Um, so like I said, I had to email the best teachers. That was difficult, but asking them face to face was probably the best idea. And I had, it forced me to ad advocate for myself. Um, so that was probably the best idea from the beginning. Uh, the preparation work. Um, okay, so the preparation I had to do for this was not a lot, but not a little, enough to keep me busy, so to speak. Um, the first thing I had to do was I had to gather the fish and grouse reveals to check them over each time before we went out. And I had to make sure they were working because I really didn't want to get out there um, and have broken rods and reels because that would make me look dumb and show that I really didn't give any preparation for this. Um, so I wanted to do my best to avoid that. Um, so like I said, I had to make sure all the rods and reels were working properly. Um, I had to make sure that we had enough wind so everyone could fish at once. I didn't want to get down there and have two, uh, a few worms that people could use. I didn't know how fast we were going to go through the worms. I don't know if we needed one container or two, so that was kind of hard to figure out. Um, I had to create a PowerPoint and present it to the, each class before we even walked out the door, because um, we couldn't just get down there and no one was going to know what to do. So I had to make a PowerPoint and I had to present it to the class, each class, each time. Um, so they kind of knew what direction I was headed in, and so we could all make this, so I could make this rapid go smoothly while we were out there. Um, okay, so my lesson plan. Um, so if you look up on the monitor, um, I told, I had to talk to the best teacher about this. Because um, they didn't know what I was doing. Um, they said, okay, this is a great kid, but what are you, what is, what's your role going to be? Um, so I told them that my role was going to be, um, I wanted to take as much as teaching off of them and off of me. I wanted to put, I kind of wanted to sit them on the bench. Um, I wanted to be that teacher um, uh, for, for the uh, students. Because um, they were curious. They were really curious about my fishing idea. They were like, okay, but what are you going to do? Um, so they said yes, like I said before, and it was good. Um, and I told them that I was going to instruct the I was going to instruct the students. I was going to show them how to catch properly. I was going to show them how to put a worm on a hook because not a lot of people like to do that. Worms are disgusting and gross because um, some of them can get really fat and smelly. Um, so not a lot of kids like to do that. Some kids are really squeamish around them. So I told them that I was going to I was going to do that. I was going to do the dirty work. I was going to fix the fishing rod, fishing rods if they got broken, help people cast out because um, a lot of people screwed that up. Um, and if the slight chance that we did catch anything, um, which to be honest, I really wasn't expecting us to catch anything, which we did, which I was glad I was wrong. But if the slight chance we did catch something, I was going to be the person to take the worm off the hook because that also, to some people, is a scary idea. Um, and my main goal. Um, my main goal was to help the, the, the students get a fish. Um, because a lot of them, I, I asked the class before we went out, does anyone fish? Does anyone know what it is? How do Very few hands were raised. When I asked those questions, uh, and a lot of them were eager to catch fish because they they were, they were exposed to something new as well, um, so they were excited just as much as I was. So my main goal was to help them catch fish, because um, if the first time I caught a fish, it was exciting. So when you catch a fish and you've never fished before, it's exciting. It's a big deal. Um, how it happened? So I'm just going to slightly restate what I said already. Create a PowerPoint, fishing at Cherry Pond, and I take a, uh, teach fishing new fishing techniques. Okay. Fishing research. So I talked a little bit about, in the intro, research. I had to do, not a crap load of research, but I had to do some research. Um, 
Like I said before, Cherry Pond has very few uh, fish left in it. Years ago, it was stocked. We did, I did research on Cherry Pond when the high school was built, how that pond was put in there, who stocked it. And I found out that years ago, when, it, when the school just opened, it was stocked. The bass, sunfish, pickle, a few other fish that I'm forgetting, bluegill maybe. Um, but I was new. It was new. When the high school was open, it was new. It was full of fish. But after, after so many years of use, it's like getting a new car. You know, Get a new car, use it every single day. What happens? It deteriorates, and eventually you got to get a new one. In Terry Pond's case, it's the new car. Except when it breaks, you can't replace it. Um, people were a lot of people use that pond. That's what it's there for. It's there to be used. But the problem was people people were catching, uh, overfishing a certain type of species. Uh, bass, in this specific specific case, um, bass are game fish. They're not. You're supposed to catch them and release them. They're not. You're not supposed to take them out. Um, they're just game fish. They do that. They do that to catch them and they release them. That's their purpose. Um, but in this case, people were catching them, taking them out, and not replacing what, what, what not replacing what they take. Um, and that you can't just do that. You need documents. There, there's certain steps you got to go through um, to do that. It's like uh, applying to be a U.S. citizen. There's steps you got to take. There's papers you got to fill out. There's documents you got to fill. Same same case with this. Um, so people were overfishing a type of fish, and they weren't replacing what they took. And that's dramatically caused uh, the fishing population in True Pond to go down crapload. Um, however, I knew that pe careless people weren't the only, reason, the only people to blame here. Um, I, from reading fish articles, videos, books, going to Bass Pro Shop, they, they mail me magazines at my house. I get magazines sometimes. Um, doing more research, I found out that pollution is also a big factor in why uh, the fish population in Cherry Pond and other lakes around New Hampshire is low. Uh, careless people are a factor here and a factor in lakes all around New Hampshire, not just here. Uh, pollution is also a key factor in why um, fishing has kind of gone scarce. Um, you're, in Cherry Pond, you're allowed to bring your boats. People can bring their, bo their boat, they can bring their canoe, they can bring their kayak, plaster board if they want to, um, to get out in the open water rather than fish on the dock, and that's fine. Um, but the problem is people bring, people bring food with them, they bring gas, they bring oil, they bring small metal tools, nails, anything. That stuff all gets put in the water. Not on purpose, I assume, but that stuff does happen. Um, oil, gas, stuff I listed, they get knocked in the water. The fish eat that fishing line, that's huge. F fishing line is huge when it, when it comes to killing fish. That stuff all gets put in the water. Fish eat that stuff, they die. Um, and then they can't reproduce, which is a bummer. Um, the other thing that, that could contribute year round is the water temperature. When when it goes to spring to fall really quickly, which it does happen sometimes, uh, the fish don't get enough time to their bodies don't get enough time to adapt to the temperature, and that can kill them as well. Um, but mainly it's mainly it's uh, people just being careless. There's a lot of trash down there. There's a lot of uh, garbage. There's a lot of fishing line down there. Bobbers, lures, a lot of also many things that can contribute to. Uh, Terry Pond's case, and other lakes around New Hampshire, trash, oil, garbage. Um, okay, so types of fish in the pond. So when, this is uh, a slide off of my PowerPoint that I presented to the class. Um, these, these were the types of fish that were in the pond. These were our goals. Uh, large mouth, which you can see on the bottom right. Pickle, and I've got a pickle in that pond. Uh, sunfish. Shamus, sunfish is the most common fish you'll catch in there, but they are tricky to get. Um, so this is what our goal was. That was what my goal was for them to catch. Um, one of them caught a bass, which is nice to see. There's not a lot of them there. The rest were sunfish. No one caught a pickle, I don't think. Uh, okay, so fishing safety. This is one of the key things I touched upon when I was presenting this to the class every single time before we even went out. This is what I, sh I could not stress this enough. Um, because we're all high schoolers, we all like fools sometimes. Um, but you can't act pretty stupid when you're handling a fishing rod, especially when you're the so at the end of each PowerPoint, this is what I stressed about the most. Um, hooks are pointy and dangerous, uh, so, so we gotta be careful. I don't really don't want anyone getting hurt, because if they get hurt, I get in trouble, and then the teams get in trouble. So I want to do the best to avoid that. Um, when they're casting, um, you want to be aware of who and what is around you. It's basic common sense. You want to be, they're not lightsabers. You can't be swinging the, the fishing pole around. Um, you just gotta be, you, you can't be done with it. You gotta be, you gotta be responsible with it. Um, you don't want to create you or somebody else. 
Um, and the bass and sunfish do have spikes on their back, so they do pop. If they do catch one, which they did, um, they do hurt. They're not going to kill you, but they do hurt if you touch one. Uh, I've touched one. It doesn't feel very good. Uh, okay, so before we go on to the pictures, um, there's one little tiny thing I had. So this is going great. I have an idea. Everything's going great. I have schedules. Everything's going great. But I have one little concern. And my idea was always, always in the back of my head. How was I going to create my passion and intertwine it with the best acting days? Um, that was really an eyesore. I could not figure that out. I, just, I could not. It took me weeks to finally figure it out. Um, but a few times a year, I, a solution presented itself if you work hard enough. Um, a few times a year, uh, the best curriculum um, includes free choices for the students on acting days, which is really nice. Um, some usual choices include rock climbing, soccer, pickleball, walking, um, so, uh, those, those types of things, ropes course, those types of things. Um, so they had their choices at right as I was getting my senior projects. Uh, and the choices for that particular time was, I think, uh, soccer, ropes course, and fishing. So the, I really believe that the angels were shining down on me on that day, because um, the timing could not have been better. Um, so I made, I made this connection really fast. I was like, oh crap, I can make this into a project, this is great. Um, but I couldn't do it if the teacher said no, for whatever reason. So my project really depended on if they said yes. Which they did, so that was, that was really nice. Um, so I'm gonna move on to a little bit of pictures. So you could say you're doing something for your senior project, but you need evidence, you need hard evidence of it. Um, so the, these are my pictures that I took. Um, these are Christine's students. Um, we went down there every morning, well, when I couldn't go down there with them. We went down there every morning, spent like maybe an hour and a half, um, but I went back to back to back, so I was down there for like four hours at a time with the students, fishing, which isn't a bad thing, because I'm fishing every single day for school hours, but it's not nice. Um, early morning fishing, this, these were my favorite. Um, on the few times of the week, a few days of the week, I got to go out there right at when school started, 7.30, I was down there by eight, did my power 45 minutes down there by eight, already eight lines in the water. Catch a fish and go in the water. Um, so these were really good. These were really fun because the fish are most active in the, in the morning and at dusk. So we, I had a lot of my students, my students in this specific case, in the morning classes had a lot of success fishing. They didn't catch anything. They didn't catch them all the time. They got bites, which bites are really good education. Um, the rewards. So fishing, fishing isn't the most exciting thing to do. You have you have to have a lot of patience to do it because you're throwing your line in the water and you're sitting there. You're really back in, doing it again. So it's not the most exciting thing to do. Um, but if you do it long enough and you're really persistent with it, you're gonna get rewarded like these people did. Uh, if you look at the kid on the right, uh, he threw his line in and two, like five, he, five times, longest, longest time he was throwing his line in. And he got a bass, which is on the bottom picture right there. You can see right there. Pretty, big, pretty decent size. Um, the second, the third ones on the right are just on fish. Um, but these kids didn't catch them by just tossing it in there and just letting it sit. They had to reel it back in, toss them in there, reel them back in. So it's a tedious process, but if you do it hard enough, if you work hard enough at it, you're going to get rewarded with a fish, and it's a pretty, it's pretty nice feeling to get that on your own. Uh, okay, so a fishing indicator. Um, this is huge. I didn't touch this on this when I was doing my presentation with the students before we went out, but I should have. Um, if you see that, there's lots of ducks and birds. Well, at least I think they're ducks. Um, ducks are a really, really key indicator on uh, where fish are. And a lot of fishermen use the, the ducks on lakes and rivers to guide them to fish. Because um, where the ducks are, there's fish. Um, and there were a lot of ducks um, on the pond in the morning, um, which was a really good indicator for me, because I was like, oh, we could be successful, we were successful. Um, so bird, ducks and birds are a huge indicator. Uh, fishing with my mentor. Uh, conveniently enough, my mentor, V, did not know how to fish. She was very clear. She did not know what, what to do. She didn't know what it was. So it was kind of fun for me to kind of educate her since she was educated me in the past and helped me a lot. So I figured maybe I could help her with this, with this task. Um, if you look on the one on the far right, that's how not to do it. Um, v really started off, V was terrible. I thought I was going to tear my, she was making me pull my hair out. Awful. Um, she was pretty, she was probably the worst fisherman I've ever seen. Um, her casting was terrible. Terrible. She was awful. But as you see, as the pictures go on, she steadily starts to, Slowly but steadily starts to improve. Um, I yelled at her a few times, but she got better. Uh, casting, that's the thing that V and I have worked on the most. Because V's casting skills are awful. But practice enough, they're gonna get better. 
Um, as you can see here, um, the picture in the center is the only thing that we got, which is uh, some seaweed. So we call it a seaweed fish. Um, that gave her a smile, so I'll give it to her. Um, as you see the one on the right, she's starting to get better. A little, little work on the hands, but getting better. Um, I also show her how to hold it. She really, she, she was holding it like uh, just terrible. I had to show her the proper way to hold it, and that's what this class is about. So we teach you people who don't know about fishing the correct way and the proper way to do it, so they can be successful. Uh, not yet. Okay. So the biggest question is, was my was my senior STEM project a success or not? Um, and I can say it was. I say I taught a lot of people, a lot of kids, different things uh, about fishing. Um, I taught them skills or suggestions. They used those skills. They were successful based on the pictures. They were successful. So that was nice to see. Um, for me to teach someone something, for them to go out there and use it and be successful, that makes them feel good and that makes me feel good. Um, I made a lot of new friends there. Um, I really enjoyed doing this project because I got to do something I love to do. Um, I love to do fishing and I got to do my project on fishing. So that was a double win. Um, so thank you. I'm not going to write everyone's name because that's going to take way too long. But uh, I want to say a huge thank you to B. Uh, B, I owe you what she helped me so much do. I was, she was on my case more times than I can count in the hallway. She slapped me in the head and go, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? <laughs> um, we only supposed to meet with our mentor who suggested me uh, twice a week. I met Ubi every single day at some point, every single day. Um, we worked together after class, after school, um, on countless days. So Ubi, I want to thank you so much for helping me. Uh, Ms. Bunnier for helping me. She's very persistent. Um, she never lost faith in me um, when I was picking my ideas. Did not get a foundation. She kept throwing suggestions at me. Kept throwing them back. Couldn't figure it out. And when I finally got the foundation ready and the fishing idea, she was very psyched about it. And it made me feel good because it gave me the confidence to go ahead and do this. Um, so I guess this is it. Thank you guys. Once you had your project? Um, I think like 